But uh, without any further introduction, would you all welcome him? I know he has a word to share with us tonight. I mean, you can clap. <laughs> Good job. So, Good evening. Good evening. Turn to your neighbor and say liar. Liar. Turn to your other neighbor and say liar, liar. Liar, liar. So guess what my sermon is going to be on tonight? Liar, liar. Hey, so far. Hey, so far. <laughs> We're going to talk about lying. Um, I don't know if I see it, do you? I, mean, I don't have to walk around like George. Is he okay? Everybody cool? Like no, day, bro. Not sit down. I better get up because she. <laughs> uh, Jordan asked me to teach about uh, I don't know, about a month ago. When I messed it up. Do Jordan asked me to teach about a month ago, and then uh, this came to my remembrance, so I'm gonna go ahead and start here. Uh, it's in the Book of Kings. It's in the uh, First Kings. Right, that means you're supposed to grab your Bible and look at First Kings. Or if you got an app, that's sufficient too. Uh, so what does the word liar mean? I'm, I'm asking you questions. Y'all can talk to me. What does the word liar mean? To be opposite. What? Anybody else? Say again. Not a, not, not truther. Not a truther. Okay. <laughs> so if you're a liar, you're not a truther. Not a truth teller. Truth teller. Okay. Okay, that's good. So you gotta know the difference between the true and lie, right? You gotta know when people are telling the truth and when people are telling a lie, right? So if you don't know what a lie is, then how do you know what people are telling the truth, right? So what is a lie? I looked it up. I happened to look in vectors or whatever, so I got the answer right here in front of me. I just want to see what y'all would say. Is to present a false impression or to be deceptive. To be deceptive. You gotta remember that. To be deceptive. In first Kings chapter twenty two, I'm gonna read uh, uh, several passages of scripture fast and uh, we'll see how far we get uh, how far we get from here. It says for three years there was no war between Aram and Israel. Then during the third year, King Jehoshaphat of Judah went to visit King Ahab of Israel. During the visit, the king of Israel said to his officials, Do you realize that the town of Raboth Gilead belongs to us, and yet we have done nothing to recapture from the king of Aram? Then he turned to Je Jehoshaphat and asked, Will you join me in battle to recover Raboth Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, Well, of course, you and I are one. My troops are your troops. My horses are your horses. Then Jehoshaphat added, but first, let's find out what the Lord says. So these two kings, they want to go to war, right? And they want to know what the Lord has to say about this. So the two kings, the first king said he wants to see what happens when he asks the Lord. So Jehoshaphat wants to talk to the prophets about the battle, okay? In verse 6. So the king of Israel summoned the prophets, about 400 of them. Now remember that, 400 prophets. And they asked him, should I go to war against Raboth Gilead? Or should I hold back? And they all replied, yes, go ahead. The Lord will give the king victory. So remember, 400. Jordan, about how many people are in our church normally on a Sunday morning? Uh, so about 200 people. So the church sanctuary normally has about 200 people. So imagine... 400 people sitting in a sanctuary, right? That's a lot of people, right? And you imagine if you were the if you're the two kings sitting on a platform. I don't know. We'll, we'll go with Jordan and uh, Pastor Cody. They're the two kings. <laughs> you don't want to be Jehoshaphat though. You won't be the other one because he gets killed. So I'm saying you know, he's the evil king. Anyway, so these two kings are sitting on the platform and they're asking all the prophets. 400 people. Right? You got the picture, right? You can see 400 people. And they all say, yes, go right ahead. The Lord will give the king victory. So what would you do if you were the king? It's a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I would go to war. Would you not go to war? I mean, if you just had 400 prophets to tell you everything's okay, 400 people in the room told you this right here is what the truth is. Let's go to war. So now, verse 7. But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there not a prophet of the Lord here? Now that kind of interests me. Prophet of the Lord. And he said it that way. So these people are prophets, and he asked for a prophet of the Lord. Okay, that was kind of interesting. We should ask him the same question. The king of Israel replied to Jehoshaphat, There's one more man here that consult the Lord for us, but I hate him. He never prophesies anything but trouble for me. His name is Micaiah. So, uh, yeah, in in law. <laughs> if you had your Bible, how would you pronounce it? In law, I think it is. Yeah, we'll go with in law. Jehoshaphat replied, "There's no way the king should talk like that. Let's hear what he has to say." So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, "Quick, bring me Micaiah, son of in law." See, King Ahab of Israel and Jehoshaphat of Judah, dressed in a royal robes. Now you got on royal robes now. Were sitting on the thrones of the threshing forth the gate of Samaria, and all of Ahab's prophets were prophesying in front of them. One of them, Zedekiah, son of Ken, 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 Kenianah, okay, come on, uh, made some iron horns to proclaim, This is what the Lord says. With these horns, you will gore the Armenians to death. And all the other prophets shouted, Yes, they said, Go to Ramoth the Gilead and be victorious, for the Lord will surely give the king the victory. So, now here it is. We still got the 400 prophets, and they've gone to sin after this one other prophet. 400 people are telling the kings, yes, you're going to be, you're going to win. And even makes a set of horns out of iron and said, you will gore the Armenians with these horns. Would you not be convinced now that you're going to win? This is yes. This is no. Okay, so make sure you're paying attention. But seriously, so these two kings got these 400 prophets telling them that you're going to win. Here's, here's, here's the fun part. Here's the, I think Jordan called him the sarcastic prophet. Here we go. Uh, verse 13. Meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, Look, all the other prophets are promising victory for the king, but be sure you agree with them and promise success. But Micaiah says, As surely as the Lord lives, I will only say what the Lord tells me to say. Now here's one prophet that stands up and says, I'm going to say only what the Lord tells me to say. In verse 15. When Micaiah arrived before the king, Ahab asked him, Micaiah, should we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or should we hold back? And Micaiah re replies sarcastically, Yes, go up and be victorious. The Lord will give you victory. So now, here, now imagine this. You ever have, well, y'all don't have kids, so. Well, not now anyway. But have you ever been sarcastic? You know what sarcasm is? You know what? No. I have no idea what y'all talking about, right? So this king, yeah, go up. You're a big victorious. You're going to have fun. Everything's going to be okay. You're going to win. So now, uh, verse 16. But the king replied sharply, How many times must I demand that you speak only the truth when you speak for the Lord? Then Micaiah told him, In a vision I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, Their master has been killed. Send them home in peace. He says, didn't I tell you, the king of Israel exclaimed to Jehoshaphat, he never prophesies anything to me but trouble. So now this king does not want to listen to this prophet. Why? He didn't hear, yeah, he didn't hear what he wanted to hear. Because this prophet always tells him the truth. This prophet's not afraid to say what the Lord, what does say the Lord. And he's willing to go against the grain. He's willing to say something different than what the kings say, or what the king's prophet says. So you got 400 people, and one person stands up and tells the king something different. Now let me ask you a question. If you were one of the 400, or the one, would you be able to stand up and tell the king what thus saith the Lord? Or are you going to be part of the crowd and just go with what the crowd says? If the crowd is doing... I don't know, pick something bad. Are you going to be one of the 400 that keeps the what? <laughs> if, you're, if, if the 400 are doing something bad and you're part of the 400, you're going to go along with the crowd or not? Yes, it's no. This is the correct answer. No. But seriously, how many times do we go with the flow, right? 
because we don't want to go against the grain. How many times have you been unwilling to stand up and say what God has put in your heart? How many times have you felt something in your heart to say to somebody, but you didn't want to say it because you were afraid what they were going to say to you? Even in church. Even in church. The Lord told you to go do something. I can't do that. They might see me. They might say something to me. Somebody might say something. Really? Church is supposed to be the protected environment. And you're supposed to be able to do those type of things and not be chastised for them. You shouldn't have a fear of doing what the Lord tells you to do. I know some of you will move, and that's, and that's great. But some of you, you know, uh, you know, I don't know what the Lord's been talking to you about or not, right? But when God tells you to do something, are you supposed to do it? This is the correct answer. Right. <laughs> okay, verse 18, 19. Then Micaiah continued, listen to what the Lord says. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all armies of heaven around him and on his right hand and to his left. And the Lord said, who can entice Ahab? I got flipping pages too. I got flipping. Who can entice Ahab to go into battle against Ramoth Gilead so he could be killed? There were many suggestions and finally a spirit approached the Lord and said, I can do it. Now this was very interesting to me. The Lord is asking, um, how can we entice him to go into battle? And, then, and, the, and the Bible says there were many suggestions. And then there was one that comes up to him, a spirit approached him and said, I can do it. Verse 22 says, how will you do it? The Lord asked. And the spirit replied, I will go out and inspire all of Ahab's prophets to speak lies. Say, liar. Liar. So he's going to entice the prophets to speak lies. And then the Lord says, you will succeed. Go ahead and do it. So you see, the Lord had put the lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets, for the Lord had pronounced your doom. The Lord was going to take Jehoshaphat out. He wanted to know how to do it. These lying spirits said, I can do it. I can entice all 400 people, 400 prophets, to speak lies. So now you've got 400 people that are enticed by lying spirits. And they're telling lies. And I'm fixing to get to one, but he doesn't even realize he's even lying. Think about that. Are you thinking about it? Just kidding. That's scary though, right? So the Lord says, I'm going to entice him to lie. Hmm. Have you ever caught anybody in a lie? No, you've never caught anybody in a lie. That was a lie. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> so, so you knew, yeah, sarcasm. So you knew that they were lying. How did you catch them? <laughs> okay, so there's a tail. So you can tell. <laughs> she scratches your left ear when she's lying to you. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's kind of a given. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you caught them because you, you, you determined what the truth really was, right? And then you knew that they were lying to you. You had somebody look you straight in the face and tell you a bold faced lie, and you catch them later and you knew they knew it was a bold faced lie? Yeah. <laughs> liar. 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 Right? Okay. So, verse 23. So, Micaiah is calling the 400 prophets liars because he went against the grain and he told them what thus saith the Lord. So now you imagine being in a room full of 400 people and they're saying, go to war. And you're the only one that stands up and say, don't go to war. What do you think the 400 people are going to do to you? <laughs> so now you've got 400 people staring at you because you told them something different than what they said, right? Now here's the one. Did Zedekiah, son of Ken, uh, uh, no. Ken, Ken, uh, uh, Ken, 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 See, Zedekiah thinks he's telling the truth. Why? 
He said, since when did the Lord, when, the, when did the Spirit of the Lord leave me to go to you? So obviously he has spoken uh, through the Spirit of the Lord before. So Zedekiah thinks what he's saying is the truth. Have you ever been slapped for lying? No. Uh, I can't remember if I've ever been slapped before. But I, bet, I bet I got my butt whipped a couple of times. <laughs> That's, yeah, I'm sure I have. Ain't it? Okay. Verse 24. Then Zedekiah, son of Kenana, walked up to Micaiah. Well, oh, I already said that. Uh, verse 25. And Micaiah replied. Well, where did that? I get my notes right here. Right Why have I not read? Where am I at? Anybody pay attention? Okay, y'all are paying attention. Verse 26. Verse 26. It says, Arrest him, the king of, the king of Israel ordered. Take him back to Ammon and the governor of the city, my son Joash. Give him this order from the king. Put this man in prison if he did nothing but bread and water until I return home safely. So now he told the truth. What happened to him? He got in trouble. The king arrested him and put him in prison and told him to eat nothing but bread and water. Now, God, I just told the truth. And now I'm in prison. What's up with that? God asks you to do something and it doesn't happen the way you thought it was going to happen. What's up with that? So now this prophet, the true prophet, is in prison. What do you think he feels like? Joseph. It feels like a Joseph. Let's see, this is Kings. Yeah, he already, he's already read the He already knows about Joseph. Right. So now he gets put in prison and has to drink uh, drink water enough of the bread and water. Uh, verse 28. But Micaiah replied, If you return safely, it will mean that the Lord did not speak through me. And then he added these surroundings. Everyone, mark my words. He's mad. He said, If you return, that means that what I spoke did not was not the truth. And I'm not going to read the rest of the story. But the rest of the story, they go into battle. Uh, King Jehoshaphat does not wear his royal robes because he's trying to hide to make everybody so they don't know who he is. So the other kings have his royal robe and everything else, and they're riding out. And King Jehoshaphat's in a uh, chariot, and he's on his way back, and it says that an archer just randomly shoots. Shoots and arrows. Randomly shoots. He's not shooting anything. Randomly shoots. And it pierces Jehoshaphat in the side, and he dies. What about that? I mean, just a random shot. I mean, that's what the Bible describes. It's just a random shot. What's the odds of that happening? 400 to 1. 400 to 1. <laughs> when, God, <laughs> when God declares something's going to happen, is it going to happen? Yes, it's going to happen. So he took out Jehoshaphat. Right? Um... So how do you know if a preacher or a teacher is telling you a lie? How do you know if I just, well, how do you know if the story I just told you is a lie or not? Did you read your Bible along with me? You read a lot of Bible along with me. So there's three of us. So did I tell the truth? <laughs> yeah. So these three are telling us, they're saying I told the truth. The rest of you, I'm just going to take their word for it. I might just make that whole story of it. <laughs> it's in First Kings, so it really is. Jordan can verify for me. He likes that sarcastic prophet. Micaiah. Okay. <laughs> so how do you know? what? <laughs> you got to be studying along right along with you, right? When somebody brings forth the word and tells you something in the word, what are you supposed to do with it? You're supposed to follow along and make sure they're telling the truth. Why? We'll follow the Bible. We'll follow what God says. When you get to heaven and you're standing at the great white throne judgment, is God going to say, John Luke, what did the Lord say? Oh, I don't know. Jordan said this. <laughs> but Thomas said that. <laughs> That's not going to work, is it? Because each and every one of us are going to be held accountable for our own self, right? Nobody's going to stand beside you on that great white throne judgment except for who? Okay, we didn't even start. Okay, Genesis chapter 1, we're going to start all over. I mean, we really got to get some basics down here, right? 
we got to understand what's in the book. And if y'all haven't been paying attention, this line thing is really where we need to start. All right. So who's going to be standing at the great white throne judgment with you? Jesus. God, God's the judge, right? Jesus is who? He's my intercessor. intercessor. There's another word I'm looking for too. Father. Huh? Father. Jesus is not my father. <laughs> He's my deliverer. Deliver. He is the letter A. Oh. <laughs> He's my huh? Savior. Savior, but it begins with A you want to look for. He's my A B. He's my somebody stands in place for you. Come on. He's my advocate. There we go. Oh, God. Get that thing out of here. That was rough. But he's gonna be there with you, right? Alright, look, if I told you to let's see, what how to put that. If I told you to hate God and love the devil. Did you hear what I said? Hate God and love the devil. Right? Liar. See, that's pretty, I mean, that's that's not too hard to figure out, right? So, I mean, we pretty much know you love God and hate the devil, right? It's not the other way around. So that's a basic one, right? If I told you it's okay to have sex outside of marriage. Okay, I heard a couple of liars. Anybody else? Fornication. That, that is sex outside of marriage. Fornicator. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that is that is the truth. It is a well, it's a truth that it is the lie. I'm sorry. Woo! Let me get that straightened out before I go tell Pastor Cody. He's telling me to fornicate. No, that's not what I said. Woo. If I told you it was okay to look at pornographic pictures. Liar. Look at your neighbor and say, liar. That's a lie. Why? Why is it not okay? It's not of Jesus. It's not of Jesus. Okay, I understand that part of it. But why is it a lie? Why should I not do stuff like that? It's a sin? Okay, well that's 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 basically it. What's it say about your eyes? The eyes are what? Pathway to the to the soul. Right. So what you see goes into your heart, right? Right? Uh, if I say apple, what do you see immediately? You see a red apple, right? Why didn't you see a green apple? Did somebody see a green you apple? See caramel. You see a caramel apple with a stick in it? All right. Uh, if I say the word Pepsi, what do you see? You see the pep you see the red and blue can, right? If I say Coke. Right. Okay, so she sees if she saw a bottle, right? So these pictures that you put inside you, right? If I'm putting that type of trash inside my heart, what do I see anytime I look at somebody else? Trash. Garbage in. Garbage out. Right. So that's why you don't do those type of things. But you've got to understand why, just because I sit up here and tell you don't do that, you know, and don't do that, you know, what's the first thing you want to do? Oh, look. Oh, look. Why can't I look at that? Why is that wrong? You know? Don't touch the red button. What's the first thing you want to go do? Go touch it. Right. Don't touch it, it's hot. <laughs> See, sometimes you just gotta learn on your own, right? If I told you it's okay to drink alcohol. Why? Oh, 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 you say that. <laughs> okay. If you're over 21, <laughs> that's a, very good. I didn't think about that part. <laughs> yes, if you're under 21, do not drink alcohol. You're very correct. But if you are drinking age, is it okay to drink alcohol? Why? It's not okay to drink alcohol. All I'm saying is just take a drink of alcohol, right? So these things, these are things that you got to know, and you got to know why you you answer yes or no to the question, and you got to know where it is in scripture so that you understand it for yourself. Because if I'm up here telling you one thing, and you interpret it a different way, then what does that mean that I've been doing to you? I've been teaching you the wrong way, right? 
It's because that's the way I believe it, or that's the way I understand it. They might not be the same way that you understand it. So if you're going to be held responsible for it, right? If a young lady asked your opinion about a dress, and you thought it was ugly, <laughs> however, to save her feelings, you told her it looked, ah, uh, it looks okay. Hey. How does God see what you just did? But you saved your feelings, though. You didn't, you didn't tell her how bad it looked. Alright, so, throw that question out. <laughs> <laughs> you're married. Alright, you're married and Shelly tries something on. What do you say? I tell her the truth. Why? Amen. I tell her the truth. Well, you should be honest. <laughs> baby, that ain't working. I'm just telling you right now. Or you tell her, baby, that's working. It looks great. She walks out and it's all floppy doppy or whatever. Right? Because you didn't tell her the truth, right? You should always tell the truth, right? That's my whole point. But I did it to save her feelings. I didn't want to hurt her feelings. Girl, you need some help. And what's going to happen? She's going to go, mm -hmm. what did you say? You're going to get called. But in the first place, you should ask your man because most of them are not fashion. That's why we should talk to you. Okay. If I ask you about a haircut, if I ask you about a purse, I mean, put, take dress out, put blue, I don't know, whatever. Blue jeans, whatever. Right? These tennis shoes look okay. You know? I mean, really. All right. All right. We got to hurry up. All right. I want to teach you a song. Right. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to sing it or not, but I'm going to teach it to you. Right? And the lyrics come from Revelations chapter 21 and verse 8. You know what it is? You know the song? You going to sing it for me? Come on. I need somebody to sing it for me. All right. Well, first of all, let me read Revelations chapter 21 and verse 8. Uh, I'm going to read 7 through 8. All who are victorious inherit these places. I will be their God and they will be my children. But cowards, unbelievers, corrupt, murderers, and immorals, those who practice witchcraft, idol worship, and all liars. Hmm. All liars. Somebody say all liars. All liars. Their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur, which is the second death. The word liar is also there with unbelievers. Huh. Unbelievers? You don't think nothing about a murder. I mean, are you a murderer? No. But you're grouped. Are you an unbeliever? No. Okay. Immoral. Those who practice witchcraft. Idol worship. Okay. Let's talk about idol worship. Do you worship idols? Are you sure? Oh. Okay, so I spent too much time with my Xbox or my BFF or whatever, or whatever it was, but I'm not worshiping them, right? Hmm. You think you can better get to heaven and say, hmm. I only play just a little while. Right. Anything that you place before God is what? It's an idol. So therefore, are you worshiping it? In a sense, yes. Woo! See, I didn't catch that till this then. Mm, no. All right, and all liars. All right. What I'm what I'm getting at though, when John wrote this, he put the Holy Spirit told him to put these group of people all together. So you don't think of when I say liar, he's also calling you. You're in the same group as a murderer, an idolater, immoral, practicing witchcraft. I don't practice witchcraft. Well, if you're a liar, you're in that same group. Okay? Alright, I'm going to try the song. Yeah, you got to sing it. You want me to sing it? Sing it. Well, if, if uh, Anna was here, I'd get her to sing it. I was going to try to get Dana and Anna to up here singing it for me, but anyway. Alright, y'all ready? So who knows it first? I want to see who knows it. Heather and Yeah, I know y'all two know it. <laughs> Heather and Sling. Alright, here we go. Revelations, Revelations, 21 8, 21 8. Liars go to hell, liars go to hell. Burn, 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 burn. burn. After I heard that, I know where Revelations 21 8 is. 
Exactly. Yeah. But we just put a different lyrics to it. So if I ask you words of the scripture about burning, what do you, uh, about liars? Revelations 21 8. Right? So I'm going to ask you next week where that is, right? Okay. All right. Uh, moving on. So how do you protect yourself from the untruth? You have to know the truth. How do you know the truth? You got to read, you got to study, right? So, do you always just take whatever we say uh, at face value and say, yep, that's exactly it? No, no. All right, what does uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 say? You might know that off the top of your head. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Paul talking to Timothy he says to know the word of God. You're supposed to study, you're going to be held responsible. Uh, John 14, 26, that the Holy Spirit will teach you truth. So if you get that check in your spirit, when somebody's talking to you, you go, what was that? <laughs> oh, it's hungry? Is that what it is? It's That's what it feels like, though. But do you know the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian? Have you ever been around a Christian person? You just know why you really ask them that they were a Christian? And then you've been around the other people that you go, ooh, they dark as dark. As dark right? <laughs> I don't know, how dark is that? Black. Black. <laughs> so, Holy Spirit will teach you these type of things, but you have to have the Spirit of God inside of you to know those type of things. Right? John 16, 36, that He will guide you into all truth and tell you about the future. That's pretty neat, huh? Anybody want to about the future? Okay, there's one honest person. The rest of you are liars. <laughs> liars. Right? But yes, so you want to know the truth, right? Oh, so maybe that's where they got fortune telling from. Like they switched, like, you know, to see where I'm going. Yes. But fortune tellers have been around way longer than this right here. The Bible? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it was banned. I can remember when... Uh, uh, the I first king, gosh, I can't even think his name. Gosh, it just totally slipped my mind. Before David, Saul, gosh, I get it right. Saul went to the witch of Endor, I believe it was, the wicked witch, the, the witch of Endor, to talk to the other prophet. Oh, I am so lost right now. <laughs> Let me get back over here. All right. Uh, 2 Timothy 4 3 says to, uh, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. So there will be a time when people will not endure sound doctrine, right? But you got to know the truth. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 28. Uh, so a prophet who predicts peace must show that he is right. And only when he predicts, only when his predictions come true, can we know that he is really from the Lord. So Jeremiah says this. He says, only a prophet that predicts something that comes true, that's how you know who a true prophet is, right? And in verse 28, he says, then Jeremiah the prophet said to Hananiah, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, but the people believe your lies. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. You must die. Your life will end this year because you have rebelled against the Lord. And then two months later, the prophet Hananiah died. That's very powerful. You stand your feet for me, please. Winner, you mind if for a second or two, please? So when the prophet tells told him, said, uh, you're going to die. And then two months later, he dies. Do you believe that, that man's a true prophet? Mm -hmm. I believe that's a true prophet. So, how do we know the truth? Huh? Well, how do you know the truth, though? I mean, you, you say you've got to know it, but how do you know the truth? You have to study. You have to study what? The Bible. The Bible. What is the Bible? God's Word. It's what? It's the Word of God. It's God's instructions to us before we leave the serve. Let's just take a minute. I want you to search your hearts. This is what I'm going to ask you. You don't have to raise your hand or no, no answers. But I want you to search your heart and 
search for the time that you might have lied about something. Or you told a small lie or what do you want to call it, a white lie or an untruth to save a friend's fingers or whatever. And if that's in your heart, tonight somebody can deal with it. The Bible even talks about people that habitually lie. Those type of things we know from the Word of God that those things that we're not supposed to do those type of things. And the only way to really know the truth is to study the Word of God and then have Holy Spirit inside of you to teach you and guide you in all the truth. It's the Spirit of God that lives inside of you that teaches you all truth. It's the Spirit of God inside you that lets you know, hey, that person is not of me. That person does not speak my word. That person you don't need to be a part of. That person you don't need anything to do with. inside yourself and you know that you just need more of the Spirit of God so that you can so that you can know the truth so that the truth will abide inside of you and you want more of God's Spirit inside of you that's what you want you want the Spirit of God to be inside of you even greater than what he is now so that you will know the truth If you want more of God, I just want you to raise your hands. You're not saying that I am a liar. You're just saying that I want more of God. I want more of God inside of me so that I can know the truth. So that I can know the things, when people speak things that are untrue, that I know what the Spirit of God, what does say the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are always there leading and guiding us into all truth. You are always showing us those things inside of our heart, Holy Spirit, that are not like you. Search our hearts, O oh God, and show us those things that are not like you. Search our hearts and show us those times that we've done things that have that, that I have, where we have failed you, where we've done things that we should not have done, where we have done things that were displeasing to you, God. Search our hearts, Holy Spirit, and show us those dark places inside our hearts that we need to work on and that we need your guidance to show us those things that we have inside of our hearts. Holy Spirit, we trust you. We thank you. We glorify you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that you lead and guide us in all truth. We thank you for everything that you do inside of our hearts.